So good evening, uh, invitees and delegates. So now we'll have session. Uh, for this session, we have chair Professor Preeti Maheshwari. So let me introduce Professor Preeti Maheshwari. She is a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee, and she supervised uh, 21 masters and four doctoral theses. And she has one chapter in the book entitled. Geotechnical Engineering Handbook, and she published 50 plus research papers in national and international refereed journals. And uh, her research interests include soil structure interaction, ground engineering, modeling, and analysis of rock mechanics. She is on the editorial board of International Journal of Geotechnical Engineering and Indian Geotechnical Journal. She has uh, received three biennial awards by Indian Geotechnical Society. and she has been nominated to represent indian geotechnical society on the international technical committee tc304 on engineering practice of risk assessment and management of issm ge for the term 2018 to 2021 i welcome professor preeti maheshwari for this session to chair thank you and thank you we have uh, dr mohammad safir pandit kawat <laughs> of course i'm finding it difficult to spell and he is uh, going to co-chair this session he is an assistant professor in the department of civil engineering at uh, national institute of technology calicut dr mohammad has completed his mtech and phd from iit delhi and his research areas include seismic robustness assessment of structures incorporating soil structure interaction dynamic response evaluation of flood induced scour inflicted bridges under sequential tremors and seismic resilient assessment of steel framed structures i welcome uh, dr mohammad to co chair this session thank you thank and now i'll hand over the stage to the chair and co chair thank you uh thank you dr rao uh let us not uh, waste the time because we have limited time so yeah. i request uh, the co chair dr mohammad to kindly introduce uh, the um, our uh, uh, the professor maheshwari yeah, professor yeah. peak maheshwari <laughs> okay uh, and uh, uh, just uh, suggest that how much time that he has for his presentation please go ahead please Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, thank you for this opportunity, the coordinators and the, all those who are working behind uh, this uh, event. So, let me uh, introduce the our honored speaker, Dr. B. K. Maheshwari. Uh, B. K. Maheshwari. Uh, she is currently Shamsher Pragash Chair Professor at the Department of Aerospace Engineering, IIT Bhooti. And the vice president of Indian Society of Aerospace Technology, Dr. Maheshwari secured PhD from Saitama University, Japan, and worked for about two years in industry in Tokyo, and then joined in Washington University in Saint Louis, Missouri, USA, as a postdoctoral fellow. Since December 2004, Dr. Maheshwari is a faculty at Department of Aerospace Engineering, IIT, Bhooti. her research areas includes dynamics of dynamic soil structure interaction liquefaction dynamic soil properties on studio model nonlinear finite element analysis slope stability and land slides professor has been awarded prestigious iit iit bhooti's prestigious samshir prakash research award for year 2009 excellent research contribution award of IAC MAG in the year of 2014. Professor also served as head of Center of Excellence in Disaster Mitigation and uh, Management, ITUG, during February 2015 to February 2018. Uh, she was the organizing secretary of prestigious Systems Symposium on Earthquake Engineering held during December 20 to 20, 2018 at ITUG. So, on behalf of the uh, the conference team and all the participants, uh, let me uh, invite the honored speaker uh, to this event. And the time allotted is for half an hour, and uh, after that we will have a five-minute uh, discussion. So, I am handing over the session to speaker. Thank you. So. Thank you, Dr. Mohammad, for introducing. Thank you, Chairman of the session. 
and uh, let me at the outset uh, uh, the thanks to the organizers particularly chairman of the conference professor tg sitaram and organizing secretaries for giving me this opportunity uh, to present my work so what is here that what i am going to talk is related to fsi solace introduction and let me tell you the solace introduction is a very uh, near uh, and dear to my heart actually for, since my phd i am working in this area my own phd was on this uh, case they there and it keep uh, you know over the time as the students and uh, so growing and i hope that uh, i'll be able to do justice with this uh, opportunity given to me so the uh, though lot of work has been done on ssi but when we talk about our country india you may be aware that uh, now this nuclear energy share is going to, is increasing year by year actually earlier we have thermal power then we have hydro power and nowadays nuclear and then we mo we have more for uh, let's say solar and wind but nuclear power are after the civil deal with the uh, uh, united states many nuclear power plants are coming but basic difference between today and the earlier uh, nuclear power plants is that earlier most of the nuclear power plants was on the rocky site but now in many uh, nuclear power plants will be coming on the aluminum soil and that's why this uh, this topic of ssi for nuclear power plants is important so with this background let me first acknowledge uh, first of all that uh, The work I'm going to present is uh, also shared uh, with uh, my uh, PhD student, Mr. Mohammad Firoz, who have in fact uh, are working on SSI of nuclear power plants uh, for his PhD. So much of the component of this presentation is coming from this, but at the same time, um, as, uh, uh, many parts of the presentation is uh, from my earlier students. So let me acknowledge. So this is from first Mohammad Firoz. then uh, uh, i'll also acknowledge that uh, currently i am serving on some fair pakas professional chair iit roorkee and certainly this chair is helping for uh, research and this presentation is, and as well as paper is part of, uh, of this chair uh, uh, the research related to this chair only and this conference you may be aware that also belong to professor samshay prakash who initiated this series of the conference let me acknowledge at the outset uh, first uh, my uh, uh, advisor at the japan phd advisor professor hiroyuki watanabe from where i have started my journey in ssi then professor kevin truman my uh, advisor for postdoctoral advisors in st louis then uh, this is uh, when i joined iit roorkee my journey was continued with my, my students my the first student pavan imani who contributed lot for ssi Uh, on modeling part then uh, dr rajiv sarkar who work for liquefaction phenomena and dr madni saeed also work for modeling of the uh, for soil interaction problem at the same time let me uh, acknowledge the sponsoring agency over the time because this presentation is like you know since my beginning from phd i i try to include all the parts here so and then what you have uh, the funding from dst as well as mhrd and then japan as well as the nsf and us army corps of engineers and uh, we also have uh, funding from royal embassy of norway in india so with this all the acknowledgement let me go ahead with this uh, presentation so uh, when we talk about ssi you already aware about that uh, that ssi is a very important it plays very important role uh, particularly for seismic response of nuclear power plants and you may be aware that uh, npt are nothing but very heavy and massive concrete buildings which are typically embedded in the surrounding foundation soil and once we consider such a heavy and stiff structures then effect of seismic soil structure interaction is very important particularly for weak soil so that we are going to discuss in today's presentation uh, the seismic analysis of the uh, uh, soil interaction for npt it is very one of the most challenging problems which is like uh, and uh, certainly it because now there are a lot of advancements in computer technology so it can be done with that continue with this so let uh, this shows the location of npvs in india with seismic zones so i'll sh share this slide from three perspectives first is the type of soil condition so you could see that there are two in two categories alluvium soil and hard soil so as far as ssi con is considered those npts which are situated on hard soil that may not be significant but for those SS, uh, nuclear power plants which are situated on alluvium soil certainly they are uh, for our interest for this uh, uh, research now uh, at the same time you see that this this uh, uh, this is seismic zonation of map of the country so fortunately we do not have right now any nuclear power plants or proposed npt in seismic zone 5 
but still we have a couple of entities uh, in June uh, four. For example, Narora in UP, which is already existing, it is in alluvium soil and it is in seismic zone four. So this this is a typical uh, uh, the example where SSI is applicable for nuclear power plants in country. Then we have Haripur in West Bengal, which is also in zone four. Then we do have Jaipur, but Jaipur is uh, fortunately on hard soil. Then there are others which are coming. We also work for little fraction for the nuclear power plants for Gorakhpur, Haryana, which is in seismic zone third, uh, and that is uh, like uh, on aluminum soil. So you see the list then in the Gujarat, Mithi, Virdi, Hari, uh, Kauda, and then in Tamil Nadu, both are on aluminum soil. But of course, they are in second and third zone, not in fourth zone. So that means uh, certainly this research is required in the country because so many uh, uh, some, uh, some many entities are already there or some, um, many others are coming on aluminum soil. Coming to geological condition of Indian entities, of course, this is not the complete list. But if I mentioned uh, Tarapur and Rawatbata, in Ra they are on raft foundation because the site condition is very good. But if you talk of Narora Atomic Power Plant or Kalpakkam in Tamil Nadu, then there is an aluminum soil and raft foundation would not be used, rather pile foundation will be used or, uh, for Narora Power Plant, you have been used. And at the same time for Kalpakkam also, most of the structures uh, which are lightly loaded could be on a spread foundation, otherwise on raft and pile foundation. Now, let me give a brief background uh, what has been done on this uh, research on this uh, area. So it, uh, it is not a new topic, but at the same time, it is very evolving. That a lot of work needs to be done yet. That's why this uh, uh, more research is required. So it is started mostly like if you go for nuclear power plants, the first uh, research paper comes from Wolf in 1981, about 40 years back, where a seismic analysis of an uh, uh, entity, Angra, Two uh, NPT has been carried out, but linear uh, elastic soil model has been uh, considered, and Winkler Foundation has been considered using fluid. Then later on, if you see in the remark column, then there are uh, you know that advancements, and the recent one we can say that uh, if we go in the fourth one, then you have the nonlinear stream constant using Winkler Foundation, and gapping has been also considered, and then continue with that. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, later on, sorry. So uh, the recently, the, like you know, that uh, uh, the very much uh, the success at all 2017. So that is something which we are like you know, I'm, and then we are extending this theory. This has been done for linear soil and structural model. So this has been uh, not here. Material nonlinearity has been not considered in the analysis. So we are going to consider. So this is a, a very much research gap, and then we are going to consider combined pile draft foundation CPRF house. So that was about our current research work with uh, who uh, Professor Mohammed is working. Continue with this uh, for today's presentation and we talk about seismic exercise for entities. So first important point is modeling of unbounded soil media to satisfy the radiation conditions. The second is effect of interaction between soil foundation system and structure system. Then modeling material nonlinearity as well as geometric nonlinearity and modeling of liquefaction. So I hope that I am audible. At any point, if I'm not audible, please uh, interrupt me. Uh, so when we talk about the different approaches of SSI, then we have the continuum models, discrete models, and finite element methods. So when we talk about continuum model, because you know the soil is very uh, like a uh, continuum model can be used for the soil, then we can consider material ge geometry, uh, material nonlinearity as well as geometrical nonlinearity, uh, uh, like uh, geometrical damping can also be considered. However, then continuum model, the problem comes that uh, the modeling of the nonlinearity is very difficult. So damping is fine that we can consider the damping. So we then we go for discrete models, which is uh, lump mass and spring and dashboard models. In these models, uh, we can consider easily the nonlinearity. But uh, when we talk about radiation damping or geometrical damping, it is difficult to consider. So these are the limitations of these two models. If we consider the finite element method, then it overcomes the limitation of the both of our above models. At, uh, however, it is at the cost of uh, high competition. So you, you may be aware that uh, like, uh, so, but uh, we can deal with the nonlinearity as well as we can uh, include the geometrical damping also in this case. So let me in brief uh, before I go ahead, but what is the uh, different components of SSI? Like uh, SSI is not only simply ground response analysis, which is free field. So it can be better explained by considering two identical structures which are situated in two different scenarios. One is on the rocky side, another is on the soil side. Uh, 
Okay. This is situated on the rock. In that case, whatever motion is coming due to earthquake, we can directly apply at the base of the structure without any change in the motion. And then analysis can be carried out as what we call the fixed base structure. But the similar analysis cannot be done even for the identical structure if between this rock and then base of the structure there is soil column. What is the effect of the soil column when the waves uh, uh, goes from this point to top? So that is basically uh, the effect of a society. And that effect can be, you know, that uh, can be break up into three components. One is what is called free field motion. Here, you don't have any structure or uh, foundation. It is simply soil, ground motion. So even the presence of the soil will change the motion at different points when the motion propagates from point C to D and E. So you could see the size of this arrow is showing the, uh, this is a amplification basically. So most of the time, this motion get amplified, but it may not be the always, but mostly it is get amplified, which is what we call the ground response analysis. And uh, many softwares are available to carry it out. So this is the first step of the soil instruction. Then if you insert the foundation inside the soil, then you can see that there is further change in this motion and the rocking components come in picture. Even your uh, input is translation only, but output will also consist a rocking component, which is called effect of kinematic interaction. The difference between these two motions is called kinematic interaction. And in this case, we are not considering any mass of the uh, structure or foundation. That is, inertia is not considered. But if you consider the inertial forces also of the foundation as well as the structure, in that case, further these all motions get changed. Mostly it is get amplified, which is called the effect of inertial interaction. So it is basically free field motion, kinematic interaction, and inertial interaction. So now let's uh, in brief discuss what is the effect of SSI. When we talk about effects of SSI, you have here uh, three types. Uh, you may be aware this is a reference spectrum given in uh, IS 1893, part one. So there are three curves which are denoting three different types of soil. One is for solid line, is for rock, uh, the uh, dark line is for rock or hard soil, while medium soil and uh, soft soil. So you can see when this uh, time period is this is 0.4, this is 0.55, this is 0.67. So if it is less than 0.67, so respect to up to 0.4, all types of soil in between this range is 2, SA by Z is 2.5. Suppose my natural period of the, uh, the system is 2.5 hertz, then it will be, uh, let's say, 0.4 uh, natural period. As a result, this SA by Z will be here. But if I consider the soft soil below the structure, rather than fixed base structure. Then as a result, what happens? The natural frequency increases, uh, natural frequency decreases due to the flexibility of the soil. And let's say if natural frequency decreases to 0.5 hours, that means natural period is two, two seconds. And for this natural period, you get this SA by Z, even for uh, soft soil as one. Well. So it come down from 2.5 to one. So normally if, uh, due to effect of SSI, the forces are reduced when we are considering the, because it is, uh, this design forces, the re reason being is uh, like uh, uh, this natural period increases and once the natural period will increase, so you can see that rest in the response spectrum, you are coming down here. So that's the uh, in general. But this is, may not be the always the case. So we need to check what is the changes in the natural period due to consideration as SSI. That is very important. Continue with this. So uh, then uh, there are simplified models used for like, for, for example, in this uh, slide, uh, the models which has been uh, by Gazetas in 1991, you have a spring and dashboard, a combination. So what is this, this, this uh, spring and dashboard on the second column? You could see this is for vertical, horizontal, that is Z, motion Y and X. These are three translation motion and three rotation, rocking in X and Y direction and torsion, that is along Z direction, uh, about Z axis. So you have, so what you have here, in this case, the stiffness, uh, this spin constant can be determined using the values given here, where B and L are nothing but the dimensions of the foundation. And Z is shear modulus, L is the length, and U is Poisson's ratio. So you simply we can determine it. Similarly, so these coefficients uh, these, uh, are given by these expressions are given by the stars 1991. Similarly, a spring coefficient, uh, which is given by AERB, which is Atomic Energy Research Board, for the nuclear power plants are shown in this uh, slide. This is for uh, for circular base. So you have vertical, horizontal, rocking, and torsion mode. 
then you have in this case if you have not a circular form base if you have rectangular base then we can find the equivalent radius uh, uh, for this uh, horizontal vertical area should be same while rotating and torsion the mo moment of inertia should be same so by equating and this is given here and in this case uh, bz and bx bsi is some coefficients are coming which can be found from this uh, graph this is dependent on l by b where l by b is the ratio of the length and width of the foundation so you can determine these coefficients using this chart so this way we can find the spring and dashboard coefficients for circular as well as rectangular foundations now continue with this now we when we talk about methods of dssi that means dynamic soil instruction normally it is divided in two part one is called what is called direct approach and another is called soil structure approach so in this case direct approach you consider the complete structure and foundation as well as soil in one attempt that means you need to consider you need to truncate the soil at some fixed boundary and some part of the soil because you cannot strictly speaking you need to consider what you need to consider you need to consider the complete you know that uh, uh, you need to consider the uh, uh, infinite domain of the soil which is not possible to consider so now the issue comes in this methods the where to put this fixed boundary uh, where we can uh, assume that uh, the soil is truncated and we consider this one so this is big issue and that we are going to discuss in detail what you could see here uh, 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 rather than going in the uh, complete detail of equation uh, let me say size salient features you have what is st are the structural node here while f are the nodes which represent the interface between soil and uh, structure so the common node the nodes which are common between structure and soil are f this is structural node and then you have soil nodes so you have three nodes t Kept as a superscript is representing total motion here. So this was for direct approach. Similarly, if we go for substructure approach, then we divide the complete problem into two part. One is substructure and another is sea fill. Normally, when we say the sea fill, so that means this excavated part is also fill. So what we do, we fill this soil to make it sea fill, and then we deduct from the structure the same amount of the stiffness and other properties from here. So the, the, it is balanced out. so we consider the free field because it is easy to deal with free field rather than excavated field so in this case the equation of motions will be for uh, the substructure one this equations for st and r while the second part this is so it is easy to find this this is uh, this can be easily done what we call the ground response analysis 1d ground response analysis and others and this is naturally this approach is easier in computation we can break we can use different detailing for uh, for, for the substructure superstructure as well as of the structure part but uh, if we go for uh, uh, rigorous non linear analysis then we can't consider in this approach in that case we need to consider the direct approach continue with this now for modeling of boundary loss of arc as i mentioned has been done in the literature and it has been done uh, in fact by um, our research group also as i mentioned by the first student imani and he have done and this was the publication in in so dynamics and earthquake in 2009 and then uh, recently uh, not very recently now it is in almost seven years then said also work in what is called uh, sbfm uh, scale boundary finite element method so i'll going to discuss in brief work and all are, are available in the literature so, but before using this rigorous modeling of boundary let's discuss that very simple boundary what are this like uh, you know the most simplest boundary is elementary boundary then we have local boundaries and then we have consistent boundaries so in case of elementary boundaries you specify the zero displacement and zero stresses and in local boundaries you have this uh, like you know that uh, viscous dampers are used which may be in the horizontal direction vertical direction and in the consistent boundary it is uh, consists of spring and dashboard combination as and shown here then for uh, boundary element methods are used so i'll skip it due to the lack of cif sim as i mentioned has been utilized by imani and maheshwari and published in soil dynamics and earthquake in 2009 so this is a concept here where you have uh, you know that basically you have exterior interface and interior interface so what we do uh, this is the radius for r1 and then uh, this uh, so we keep it truncating uh, and then ultimately so i'll show it down here yeah it is here so what is done here well, our objective is this is complete system so we break into two part one is near field and far field near field is a zone where we are considering the material nonity of the soil nonity are concentrated while far field is a zone where you have most of the you can consider the linear system what happens when you go from 
a uh, far field can be modeled using what is called the ci fission using this concept where we uh, determine the dynamic stiffness of the system and then using an interface it is lumped with the near field and then this can be simply once you lump with this then it can be easily analyzed like uh, using simple finite element methods so this has been already done and uh, many of the results which i have already shown i am going to discuss this this is as i mentioned uh, in 2009 publication so you could see that uh, for different uh, this has been done for uh, single pile for uh, uh, two by two pile group with uh, spacing 5 10 and s by d equal to 2 5 and 10 so you could see this is for dynamic stiffness this is first case is for horizontal vibration and the second is for vertical vibration this is real part and the imaginary part so you could see that using this technique how close was the result from the published one by kenya so uh, and then so this is uh, but using present study means the study done by imani and maishwar and this, so this shows that this boundary is perf uh, working perfectly well then going to the next uh, uh, said and maishwar used uh, scale boundary finite element method in 2014 and this has been published in asc and what you could see here uh, in this case uh, the uh, advantage of sbs sbfm over the cfcm that computation is re reduced because the spatial dimension boundary is reduced by one that is for 3d problem and only 2d boundary is required so what is done here is simple problem is taken in vertical direction and then uh, this has been uh, here uh, viscous dashboard is also used and the results are compared here in this slide what you could see that uh, this uh, as uh, the so, uh, the solid line top line is using sbfm uh, which has been done by this and then uh, these are used from displayed dashboard where b is the dimension shown here so naturally if when you use viscous dashboard you can get close result but at that at this, uh, in that case you need to use the large domain and this large domain will increase you know once you use this large domain so you could get uh, accurate results but at the cost of high computation so what has been done here as bfm it is giving not only the results of uh, uh, very close to a dashboard b equal to 30 meter not of 5 meters so that means very uh, uh, close to accurate results but at the same time computation cost is re reduced about computation cost of uh, this work has been published in computer and geotechnics so, so that means we where this we try to reduce the computation time even using uh, the regress uh, boundaries so now this was for then continue with the modeling uh, uh, then uh, continue uh, this uh, further comparison has been done in the results for 1d ground response analysis with viscous transport and kelvin elements so you could see that this is uh, the solid uh, is for viscous transport while this uh, holo uh, using fesbfn so the results here at uh, lower frequencies are uh, uh, this viscous transport is giving higher uh, response amplification but at when we go at higher frequency it is other way so but this is because uh, we need to understand that viscous dashboard and kelvin elements that has been used viscous dashboard uses then it has been uh, like you know that uh, uh, the boundary uh, which is uh, the domain is uh, only limited domain has been used not uh, the exact domain which has been shown here so now the second part is on the nonality of soil so nonality is important both material nonality as well as geometrical nonality so this has been published in this publications maheshwar et al and maheshwar in imani and saying then maheshwar so this is i'll skip that this is the background so very quickly uh, that uh, earlier the material nonality started from metlock in 1978 this was the first work done on then winkler model schemes and time domain methods have come so time domain methods uh, has been con contributed from uh, my uh, research from washington university in st louis and then uh, fortunately my students continue with this legacy so this is like what you have this uh, uh linear analysis so this was the model developed in 2004 so this is uh, though it should be for the linear analysis but we try to use uh, to uh, because uh, is a uh, device scheme which can be used for nonlinear analysis and this is published in soil dynamics and earthquake in so what you have here in this scheme you we divide this whole system in two sub structure system one is foundation and another is structure system so normally what people does they uh, solve one system uh, for complete time history and then give the input to this here so no what we did we divide the time history also in a very small small time interval and whatever output have come here at the top of it when you uh, apply the ground motion here has been given the as a input to the base of this then whatever the, 
uh, after solving this, you find the F phi delta T. And in the next cycle, this is loaded by this ground motion as well as the initial forces from the top. And if we solve it in the second time step, it goes. So it could work well for nonlinear analysis also, approximately. So the system considered was here, single pile system and two by two pile growth system. Then you have foundation system here. So I'll skip this. The modeling of soil has been done using what is called twin elements, which is a combination of spring and dashboard, as shown here. And it is on the boundary we have is, but when you cut the system this here, one fourth model is used to uh, decrease the compression time. Then it is important that you apply the appropriate boundary of symmetry and excess of anti-symmetry. So these are the sum of the results here, uh, which is published here in my, uh, so what you could see is that we use for nonality his model, which is developed by process CS Desai. And this is the, for elastic, particularly at a higher frequency, you could see the dynamic stiffness have decreased very much here. This is for S by D equal to five. When you consider S by D equal to 10, then these are the results. So the peak values are very much decreased due to the non here, uh, the dynamic. So it reduces dynamic stiffness very much. Though effect, there is an effect in damping also, but effect on damping is not so significant as you can see the effect on the dynamic stiffness part. Then continue with this uh, non of soil uh, has been also considered uh, by in this model, like uh, by uh, this Maheshwari and Imani in 2014. So in this publication, again, elastic and comparison with HSS is considered. You could see that again, there is much difference on real part, but not so much on the imaginary part. So elastic model, and this is HSS. So, so. Then for continue with uh, Saeed and Maheshwari also considered and for different elasticity of soil. So you could see the result here. When we change the uh, EP by ES ratio, where EP is the uh, Jens modulus of the pile and ES the uh, Jens modulus of soil. So these are the results shown here. Now, let me discuss very important topic, SSI on liquefiable soils. Once we consider liquefiable soils, so this has been done by uh, one of my students, Sarkar, Rajiv Sarkar, and I'm going to share the results here. So what you could see, in this case, you have complete uh, soil, soil pile structure system. Three models have been considered. One is linear elastic model. Another is the soil model without uh, pore pressure generation. And third one is with pore pressure generation. So these are the results. When we do not consider the pore water pressure generation, then there is hardly any difference between elastic and the model results. So you could see it is already published here in uh, 2001 publication, 11 publication. And then if we see the with the uh, uh, with poor water pressure generation, then you could see that there is a large difference in this. Uh, this so that means this reduces dynamic stiffness very much. So now the recent work which has been done by uh, the Fios, uh, rather than he is doing, so it is already published in 17th WCE, what conference on earthquake engineering. So what is this has been done for nuclear power plant exclusively. So what you have here, you have a soil, and the top of most of the nuclear power plants on the rough foundation. And then you could see that this is using the lump model and the soil has been modeled using the simple spring and dashboards. Uh, of course, uh, two types of analysis have been carried out using finite element model for this complete NPP as well as soil part, as well as using equivalent spring and dashboard. So uh, what you could see the spring and dashboard coefficients Springs are applied in uh, horizontal direction, vertical direction, as well as in uh, rotational mode. So what you have here uh, for calculation, you require shear velocity. Simply shear velocity can be calculated using n values. And then we, once Vs is found, then we can found the value of C max. And then further calculations are done. So let me share some of the results. So what has been done right now, it has been done for equivalent linear method where the soil Z by Z max curve and damping ratio curves. This is called modulus reduction curves, and this is uh, damping ratio curves. Uh, and this has been uh, given by Wustig and Dobry. Uh, and this is for different PI values of the soil. In the different three curves, it is for 0 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15. So accordingly, different types of soil PIs are written here in this column. So different curves are used, and analysis has been done. So these are the steps for the analysis, where what is done, let me explain quickly that we consider first of all up to which point this Z by Z max is one. So we calculate that strain for given curve. And that for that strain, if your strain is lower than the strain, then you don't require any nonlinear analysis. So that need to be checked. So, and if we need to carry out the nonlinear analysis, the issue comes, what is the value of Z and damping ratio? So what is done? 
uh, we consider z values and damping ratio for this corresponding strain and we start our calculation and then again find the strain and once the strain is found then for uh, once we find this uh, updated strain then again the revise the value of z by z max and damping and this is continue until you get the convergence so uh, the motion considered here is input bedroom acceleration cobe time c has been considered here uh, you could see that this is the maximum pca is 0.344 z and the predominant frequency is 0.58 hertz but when the slow motion comes from the uh, uh, ground level then this is jump to 0.421 z and 1.7 hertz so this is applied and you could see the results are very like you know that's uh, close using finite element models and spin dashboard models uh, which has been published in wc uh here you could see this so uh, these results and this comparison if we compare this here so what you could see this is finite element model and spring dash model this table is giving a comparison so when we consider without embedments of the nuclear power plants this is a uh, difference is less than 7% with embedment difference is little larger 12% but it's still finite element model and spring dash model models are giving quite close results and that is uh, i hope that uh, it will lead to the more research then continue with this this was for displacement this is for same thing for acceleration and the results are close 16 to 15% uh, though difference have increased percentage uh, when we compare spring and dashboard model now this is for sa by g for different time periods using spring models dashboard models and fm models so uh, the results are very close particularly if you see the trend using both the models are quite same though there is in the peak values which is expected because the difference are coming 8 to 4% So what you could see uh, when we talk about spring dash model, this is for embedded foundation is proposed to calculate the seismic response of lumped structure on the layered soil mass. A comparison of results obtained by the proposed method with those provided by the FEM shows that it can calculate the horizontal displacement, acceleration time c, as well as response spectrum for seismic design. Therefore, the proposed method has an advantage over the finite element method because it is give the less computation. it is very simple and it is reduces the completion time period uh it is applicable for embedded foundation also and there are different software packages available for mpp modeling then we have sasi ls dyna and abacus but each one have its own limitation all has been discussed i'll not go in detail because due to limitation of time this has been given in the paper so one can go through that that this packages let me summarize and uh, so first of all for the accurate modeling of boundary it is very important that we consider uh, for ssi uh, modeling is very important so both simplified and regress boundaries are available and their application need to be done case by case interaction effect that is soil pile interaction as well as uh, pile soil pile interaction which is for pile group that is must to be considered for uh, during seismic loading the complex dynamics stiffness is frequency dependent so the correct frequency dependent characteristics of the whether we work in time domain or frequency domain we need to understand that uh, uh, soil is frequency dependent characteristic behavior of soil is non linear that need to be considered and for mpp we, we need to because the combined pile draft foundations are being used uh, particularly for soft or aluminum soil conditions so the analysis of cprf considering as the size complex but very important for safety of these structures these are the key references which has been used in the uh, this uh, presentations and uh, many references i think more than 100 has been listed in the paper so if anyone is uh, like uh, you can go through and with this i am come to the end of my presentation thank you very much for your patient hearing and i'll be happy to uh, answer the questions and still if there is any query anyone can uh, uh, send me email on these addresses thank you very much thank you chairman and co chairman for thank you professor maheshwari i would like to add that ssi is such a vast topic that it is really impossible to you know uh, even take up one small part of ssi and finish it within half an hour but at least uh, uh, professor maheshwari has tried to give us uh, the overall idea about uh, this particular topic and uh, uh, if anybody has any question uh, we have 5 uh, minutes uh, uh, we can have some quick uh, question answer session or interaction with professor maheshwari can i have one question please yes please yes uh, thank you professor maheshwari very interesting lecture uh, sir i have one clarification generally when we do any 
soil structure interaction problem in finite element so we will go for a kind of no uh, interface elements and then we give some kind of normal and shear stiffness interface elements based on the test conducted on direct shear test and all but in this particular case how do we evaluate this uh, spring dash constants like uh, stiffness and damping and all how do we evaluate and then use that in the analysis yeah so uh, uh, let me take this into two part this is very good question actually the spring and dashboard models which i have showing is for boundary uh, i have not talked in my presentation for uh, what is called uh, you know that uh, the interface is required because there is a uh, different material soil and pipe so what happens there is a uh, when the due to this particular loading there is a gap what is called we call slip and separation so to model and slip and separation those kind of elements are required so that interface elements will be a different uh, story where this spring and dashboard model which i have shown is modeling for boundary only so that that is required but i have uh, for uh, due to lack of time i could not talk to that though we have done some work on that also okay. so that is there so okay. that interface element is basically to differ because uh, there is a large difference in the stiffness of soil and pipe so that yeah. that's required otherwise it is not required yeah. Yeah. so that okay. thank you yeah thank you any other question please quick question hello yeah 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 go ahead please dr mahesh yeah you are saying something about boundary yes sir yes sir yes. so uh, actually uh, there is an influence zone under the structure so when the structure is resting on the flexible media uh -huh. certain quantity of the soil is under influence right right so how to identify this influence zone uh, perfectly means we we have certain guidelines available as such but uh -huh. is there any specific method to identify the quantum of the soil actually is under influence yeah yeah that is also very good question actually see what you raise is very pertinent for ssi and that was covered in my first part of the modeling of soil uh, strictly speaking we need to consider the infinite elements and infinite domain but because uh, this influence remains up to certain points so what we do, can do we need to calculate the strengths in the soil which are coming due to the your uh, the uh, uh, loading whether it is coming due to seismic loads or whether it is structure loads so if strains are within linear zone then there we can truncate our boundary and the rest of the part can be considered elastic media but in any case we need to consider the whether we need to use uh, some kind of boundary whether we use say viscous dampers which is the simplest or the, the regress boundary to model perfectly that is what we call the radiation conditions in the ssi so radiation condition is important to satisfy and the boundary is available so basically rather than you know considering you apply a boundary so answer i'll say rather than uh, truncating it arbitrarily uh, you apply some boundary bound there are different boundaries are available so boundary should be applied so that is the answer yes so the the boundary is very much important we yeah, and, uh, where the boundary will that will depend on the type of boundary so the answer will come there that uh, like for example viscous uh, the dampers you require large uh, more uh, uh, like you know the space but if you use kelvin elements then uh, your size will reduce mm -hmm. so okay yes thank you sir thank you very yeah. much welcome okay thank you so um, since we have the constraint of time maybe if anyone else wants to interact with professor maheshwari they can do it through email or his publications are also there so i just thank professor maheshwari uh, for his uh, lecture thank you so much thank you uh, chairman professor preeti maheshwari thank you yeah okay thank you so uh, now we will uh, move to the uh, uh, paper presentations we have uh, in all total five presentations uh in this session so to start with we have the first presentation on seismic performance of cohesionless soil underneath gravity dam by dr asad from iraq so over to you dr asad uh, please uh, try to wind up in 8 minutes please go ahead i i'm just uh, thank you very much for uh, the beginning of dr the keynote speaker for this session which was very interesting actually and i have very important question if we can apply it before starting if i can apply the simplified procedure for any other structure heavy structure because as we know we expect the failure mechanism for the soil underneath 
the silos, for example, is very close to the power plant. Uh, um, maybe I'll try to send an email to the uh, keynote speakers, the doctor. Yeah, the, um, <clears throat> I am Asad al Defy from University of Asset College of Engineering, 200 kilometers south of the capital, Baghdad. And in terms of the forecasting, the temperature outside is 50 today, 50 centigrade. Uh, I graduated from civil engineering in University of Dundee, UK, just uh, eight years ago at the end of 2030. I was interested in, in, in uh, let's say, geotechnical center of huge test and physical modeling. My presentation is a seismic, per for seismic performance of the cohesion-less soil underneath the gravity dump. Uh, the presentation outlines will try to, start with the background, problem statement, aim and objectives, methodology and the results at the end of the conclusion at the end uh, as we know the dams is very important infrastructure for life in around the world and we expect that any dynamic response or the uh, seismic uh, events on earthquakes will be destructive for the lives of the people uh, this project or this paper is a very small part of the very big project for my phd student and uh, uh, i constructed here and just for the dynamic response of the soil underneath the gravity dams, which is not in the response for the structure of the dam. The failure mechanism we expected for the dams, as we know, that is ve it's very heavy structure. We expect the uh, liquefaction will be very serious problem in the failure mechanism, whether the failure will be as a sliding or maybe in the overturning at the and, and also the dewatering or let's say the change in the water level in the upstream side will be very effective for the dynamic response during the very short earthquake times. Um, <clears throat> the aim of the, and the objective is a small scale of the concrete dam will used with a certain dimensions. The simultaneous existing dams in reality proportion to the side of the shaking table machine Small scale shaking table will be used to simulate the multi frequency motion, which is very close to the earthquake, real earthquake motions. Uh, uh, the, uh, the shaker actually provides uh, at the beginning of the test uh, sinusoidal waves, but at the end of the test, when we we'll try to check the output, we found that multi frequency output from the motion, which, which is very close to what we need in the preliminary design in the structures. The principle of physical modeling, multi-sensor are used also like in linear variable differential transducer, accelerometer and water pressure sensors. And unfortunately, all the earth pressure sensor are crushed in this test. And so it's not presented in this paper. Mm -hmm. This is the very simple shaking table with the container at the, above the shaking and also the prevention technique to prepare the soil model using that uh, air technique method or sand raining method. This is the shaking, uh, the pluviator that, mechanical pluviator that we used, which is at the beginning optimized the sand used, which is, was very close to the HST95. Uh, the sand is uh, actually is collected here from the same city. Uh, and uh, we try to optimize the sand to be very close to the HST95. 95 or Collington silica sand, as we have seen here, the calibration of the of the pluviator device to investigate exactly which relative density that will be used in the test. This is the particle size distribution for the soil, comparing with the silica sand and even the Ottawa sand. The input motion that used is very destructive motion, which is about 0.9 input motion actually just to investigate how the soil behave under this very uh, destructive motion with a time about 10 seconds and the predominant frequency about 1.6. Two tests actually te uh, are examined here in this paper. So the first one is the MBT uh, dams and the other one is a fold with water in the upstream to investigate the response of the, or the dynamic response and seismic behavior for the uh, soil and even the dams. Uh, this is the output for the acceleration response in terms of the time acceleration. Um, 
as we have seen for the test one and test two, this is just a test one, as we have seen the amplification is uh, very uh, clear actually in terms of the when the dam is empty, which is a very serious problem. And while attenuation is noticed in terms of the filled with water, so the dam went filled with water and uh, uh, will be resistant to the propagation of the wave from the bedrock to the upstream of the surface. Uh, this is the very key finding of this paper. The spectral acceleration, acceleration response spectra also is examined to investigate how this behave comparing with the error code, as we have seen in the short period, uh, we have an excited motion in terms of the MPT case, and uh, it was much better comparing with the, uh, in terms of the fold with water case. Uh, and we ha as we have seen the conclusion, the recording acceleration two and three was amplified due to the side amplification. On the other hand, amplification of the motion begins from the bedrock, the ground surface. Curated soil particles either absorbed in the damping the seismic waves is clearly observed by recording of the sensor X2. Saturated dam model test one compared with the dry test and test two. There is a noticeable attenuation in the read, in reading of the acceleration sensor it's in both of the two and three. This was occurring due to the heavy load of the dam model causing the constraint of the seismic waves. Finally, the response of the soil underneath the dam's model is very safe because the heavy weight of the dam model, this is very important finding as the area as the area may contain constraint, construction, some significant structure parts such as the blanket of the dam or the cutoff as well. And uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, this is very quick presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Asad, for your uh, timely presentation. Uh, may I now request uh, um, the other who are uh, attending this uh, session, if they have any question, uh, they can interact with Dr. Asad. Thank you. It was very nice presentation, and uh, it have a very like uh, Dr. Asad. So right. it was for because you have considered cohesionless soil for seismic performance. Have you given the attention is uh, for liquefaction also? Yeah, actually, as I said, this is a small part of the very big project for my PhD okay. student. So uh, okay. the liquefaction, is, you know, is a very serious right. phenomenon. It takes too long time to investigate the behavior at the end of the project. So okay. but basically, we found that one of the failure mechanism also it's a sliding. We have two parts of the soil underneath the soil. The first one is a stable, uh, is movable. And the second one is the stable underneath. And we have also a very sensitive camera and is embedded within the soil, a waterproofing camera, high resolution to investigate also how the sliding of the failure due to the liquefaction increasing of the poor water pressure during the earthquakes. Okay, okay, I can understand because soil conditions are good. So that, that's thank, okay. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Man. Dr. Asad, uh, it is really not easy to carry out the experimental work on such topics. And I would love to see the results of uh, your studies. Uh, you. Really, it is it is really great because it's not it's not easy to simulate all these things in the lab. I know. I know. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you uh, so now uh, we move to the uh, next presentation on seismic performance of building frames, considering soil structure interaction by Dr. Mahesh uh, from uh, Valchan Institute of Technology, Solapur. Uh, may I now request Dr. Mahesh to kindly share the screen. Please try to stick to the time of eight minutes, please. Yes, madam. Yeah, Thank we, you. Can, we can see your screen. Yes. yes, please yes. go ahead. Yes. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, today, I'll be going to present uh, my work on seismic performance of uh, building frames, considering soil structure interaction. Uh, I'm working as an assistant associate professor in Walchan Stop Technology, Solapur, Maharashtra. So this would be a flow of my presentation where I will be touching upon the different issues of uh, my work. And especially this particular work is completely based on the uh, experimental work study. So as uh, we know that uh, the, the fixed base condition is a conventional method of analysis. However, it is not realistic as we are aware that the structures are resting on a flexible media. 
Therefore, uh, this demands the realistic method of analysis, which incorporates the interaction between the structure, foundation, and the soil. And therefore, this process uh, of uh, considering the response of the structure and response of the soil together, we call it as a soil structure interaction. Uh, now, the necessity uh, is quite obvious because the SSI will change the dynamic characteristic of the system, such as modal frequencies, vibrating shapes and all. And it will also increase the modal damping as some of the vibrating energy in the structure will be transferred to the soil. And, and it will influence the free field, uh, free field ground motion. And uh, apart from these uh, facts, the design codes uh, which uh, need to provide more definitive guidelines for treating SSI effects. Unfortunately, we, did not, we don't have any uh, very particular definitive guidelines for uh, the problems associated with SSI. So the methodologies, although are improving, but still are inadequate. So this is a pictorial view where the phenomenon of soil structure interaction has been uh, presented. So many of you might be aware of this, so I will not go in detail where a certain quantity of the soil is under the influence of the structure and the response of that soil mass certainly will affect on the response of the structure. So taken together, we need to do the analysis that we call soil structure interaction. The object of my study is to validate the experimental study and thereby studying the impact of SSI on the performance of building frames of various heights by studying impact on various dynamic properties of the structure, such as acceleration, velocity, and displacement. And also to formulate general guidelines regarding incorporation of SSI in the analysis by identifying the SSI sensitivity of the building frames with reference to their geometrical configuration. So this is a facility available at our institute. So we have a uniaxial shake table of a three ton capacity of size two meter by two meter and it has got a, a servo hydraulic actuator of 100 kilonewton capacity. The, the, uh, all other specifications are listed here. So this facility we have used for our work. And uh, the major job is to go for the scale down. As uh, all of you are aware that uh, the prototype structure is not possible to test because of the limitation of the uh, facility. So uh, the, the scale down model need to be uh, developed. And uh, this particular scaled on model uh, shall be in accordance with the similitude, laws of similitudes. So using these laws of similitudes, so we have formulated uh, certain uh, models so that I will just present in front of you. So before that, we have considered one prototype structure, basically three building uh, frames we consider. One is of uh, G plus three another one is G plus five and G plus seven with all these uh, specifications. So these are the dimensions of the prototype RC building. And these prototype RC buildings now we converted into a scaled down model. So that process is explained here. So we have considered the dynamic uh, similarity. And for this, uh, we need to go for uh, two principal test conditions. We need to establish one is the density of the prototype and model should be similar. And we need to check the natural frequency of the prototype and it should be scaled down to the model. So that particular simulation we have done. Then adopting the appropriate geometric scale factor uh, is one of the important steps. Then due to size limitation of the shape table, the plan dimension of the model, we set as 0.32 meter because our base width was four meter earlier. That four meter, we decided to convert into 0.32 meter. Uh, then accordingly, my scale factor works out to be 12.5. So this is a geometrical scale factor. Then accordingly, all other dimensions were scaled down and the length, height and the width of the building has been determined. And uh, the frequency also we determine. So as per the Subnis and Harris, the, the frequency of the model and frequency of the prototypes are correlated with this equation. So knowing the frequency of the prototype, I have determined the frequency of the model. What is the frequency of the model needed? So based on the application software, the prototype structure frequency we got as 1.47. And based on this factor, 3.54 is my factor of uh, or ratio of uh, frequencies, which I obtained. 
So using this particular ratio, I just uh, found out what should be the frequency of the model, and that is worked out to be 5.24 hertz. And after preparation of the model, we have checked whether we get the same frequency or not. Then the density also we scaled down, and uh, the density of the prototype we obtained as 264 kg per meter cube, and the same density we maintained. And uh, the scaled on model accordingly, the mass of the scaled on model needed was 30.27 kg. So with this all background calculations, we ultimately arrived at these models with these specifications, which are given in the table. So the three models, G plus three, G plus five, and G plus seven steel models, we uh, converted into a small scale, and uh, accordingly, the all the dimensions are shown. And now these models we used for the test. Before we using uh, the uh, using it for the test, we validated. So we prepare the model using the ETAB and we perform the analysis. Uh, and uh, a, a particular time history is given, and the response of the roof acceleration is presented. So for the ETAB model, the roof acceleration is shown here with a, a, a white color, okay, a little bit uh, of white. Then uh, the experimental model indicated by a red, or sorry, the Um, black lines. So from this, it is observed that almost the same response we are getting for the experimental model as well as the ETAB model. Then, uh, then we went for the setup. So in the laboratory, uh, we uh, go, went for the fixed base condition. So this is how uh, at the bottom you can see the model is mounted on the shake table directly with the help of the bolts. And uh, this is how uh, all the accelerometers and uh, the sensors are kept because we wanted to measure the responses at different floor levels. Therefore, the sensors are placed at different floor levels. And the next is the setup for the flexible base, where we need to consider the SSI. For the SSI effect, uh, there is a requirement of the the container where wherein we can uh, fill the soil and you can simulate the soil mass. So for that we have uh, used this uh, steel tank of a, a dimension, say 1.6 meter by 1.6 meter in plan, okay, uh, and then the 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 height is of 0.7 meter. Then this is how we fill the soil in this container, with taking care of uh, the appropriate uh, density. So uh, to simulate the boundary conditions, we use uh, the sheets here. thermocol sheets are used to just simulate the absorbing boundary conditions and the soil is filled in layers okay so that there will be a proper compaction so all the soil is filled uh, and uh, after the compaction is over we verified its density also by conducting this particular uh, core test so this is how the soil is filled and the models are kept on the soil mass and these are the properties of the soil which were used for this particular study dr mahesh i'm sorry to interrupt you but can you please just wind up because the time is up just yes. take one or two minutes and then wind it up please yes yes madam sure sure thank you so uh, this is how the 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 setup is and uh, we went for the study and time history analysis is carried out uh, using al centro and this is the response we obtain uh, the left side shows the fixed base response and right side is the flexible base so this is the response of g plus 3 building and the roof level acceleration and roof level velocity and roof level displacement so all the three parameters are presented here and we consider the maximum response and accordingly we just compare what is the response for fixed base and flexible base story wise so for g plus 3 building as you can see here the red line is of a flexible risk uh, based response and the fixed uh, green is a fixed base response and it is observed that uh, the flexible base condition is producing lower response therefore the ssi is not significant in low rise building because it is happening in all velocity displacement whereas in g plus 5 building this is reversed so the the, the flexible base uh, giving more response therefore we say that the Uh, all the floor at all the floors flexible base is producing higher response than the fixed base therefore ssi is significant and that too the ssi is significant uh, in the mid uh, height where we get the variation in around 20% to 25% and whereas in g plus 7 building we get a mixed kind of response and uh, it is observed that uh, in a mid height uh, fixed and flexible base conditions are producing almost similar response 
okay whereas in the remaining uh, upper heights say maybe 6 7th or 8th story we are getting 30 to 40% higher response for flexible base so this indicates that the ssi is significant in top almost 40% of height of the building whereas in the bottom portion the ssi is not significant so therefore based on this we conclude that ssi effect is not significant for low rise building frame it is due to the fact that the buildings are not influenced by seismic forces however the conventional analysis is recommended for such building the study reveals that mid rise and high rise buildings are influenced by ssi and in mid rise building ssi effect is prominently observed as compared to high rise building in high rise building ssi effect is not significant in almost 60% of the height whereas upper 40% of the height is only affected by ssi so this reveals that the structural configuration plays an important role so due to this fact in the present study it is observed that the mid rise buildings are greatly affected than high rise building frames and in case of any variation in the parameters the performance of the building frame will vary because the above study is been uh, uh, is or above conclusions are drawn based on certain assumptions and uh, the above discussion reveals that conventional analysis excluding ssi may not be adequate to ensure the structural safety therefore it is recommended to incorporate ssi in the analysis of at least mid rise and high rise building frames so these are the references used for this presentation thank you thank you very much thank you dr mahesh can we have just one or two quick questions can can i ask a very quick question yes yes yeah, please was, yes uh, dr mahesh it was good work actually yes. uh, you know that uh, you have done experimental work yes sir and the experiments are done particularly for ssi is very difficult and yes. i can understand that uh, in this uh, walchand college uh, you have done a wonderful job so like uh, that what was the relative density of the soil which you have used for the your, in your water tank have any idea about relative density yes sir so that was around 0.6 to 0.7 we maintained sir okay that means 60 to 70 percent yes sir yes okay 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 so my only the suggestion that uh, i mean if you continue for your research and other things use some uh, loose uh, like you know 30 to 40 percent or so then your effect may change because ssi effect may not come until you have uh, some so very I, yeah yeah if because your density is quite good yes so sir, the yes. effect will not be so significant because it will play a role yes so sir. this is a small comment but otherwise it is good good work okay yes sir thank you actually we extended the work we studied the different type of soil later on okay and okay. we got some results also but this was the initial stage because the experimental setup was a big challenge for us and yeah i can uh, for an institute like us it is very difficult to have all kind of facilities but so what, what is the manage. size of the shake table you have a very good shake table you have yes sir it is 2 meter by 2 meter sir yeah so that is not uh, it is a good good size yeah, yes sir two. and it's a 3 ton capacity sir payload yeah. capacity up yeah. to 3 ton we can have okay okay yes mm, and you are really I'm, doing an amazing uh, amazing work uh, there dr mahesh yes uh, dr sneha you I, have I, very I, Yeah, yeah, please. yeah. I have a small query. Uh, yeah. How the connection between the soil and the structure is maintained during the experiment? Yes, madam. So for that, we went for some embedment. So the the steel made uh, steel models were embedded into the soil mass, and uh, this particular depth of embedment we calculated based on the minimum depth of foundation requirement, and uh, as we ensured that uh, this particular soil is very much dense. okay we compacted it so that whatever is the required minimum depth of foundation that much we have provided so the whole uh, structure was steel structure right you have done for steel structure yes madam yes yes theek hai thank you thank you so much thank you madam okay. thank you very thank much thank you dr mahesh and thank you everybody so now we'll move to the uh, next presentation on effect of non homogeneity of seabed soil on natural frequency of offshore free spanning pipelines by gautam sarkar from nit durgapur yes ma'am uh, a very good afternoon uh, all, all of you my name is gautam sarkar uh, my topic is the effect of non homogeneity of uh, seabed soil on actual frequency of free span pipeline uh, these are the overview of my uh, presentation so coming to the introduction as you all know uh, there is a considerable amount of um, hydrocarbon in form of energy uh, under the seabed so the pipeline is normally used to uh, transport that uh, hydrocarbon 
from offshore platform to on uh, onshore processing unit and this span or suspension that span is normally occurred due to the irregular seabed or change of topology such as scouring or scouring uh, scouring or sand wave this uh, picture shows the typical uh, fish span scenario where the steel pipeline has been laid and the, normally this steel pipeline has coated with concrete coating for uh, stability purpose to increase the submerged weight and determination of lowest natural frequency uh, is very important uh, uh, for fish span analysis because if the net, uh, natural frequency of the uh, fish span is uh, approached to vortex in vibration then uh, resonance will appear and that resonance will da damage to the pi uh, pipeline and ultimately the pipe will, will uh, fail and natural hazard um, situation will come and, and on the other hand the allowable span length uh, uh, span length is also a function of natural frequency that's why uh, the natural frequency of fish span is very much important so uh, predominant factor uh, of the natural frequency are pipeline profile that is length or diameter and thickness of the pipeline then boundary condition seabed soil axial force initial imperfection temperature this uh, figure shows the idealized uh, fish span scenario where soil has been um, uh, replaced by linear spin and lsh is the shoulder length combining fish span length and uh, shoulder length is we call as effective length of pipeline so uh, of coming to the objective of my uh, presentation uh, i have had, uh, from the literature, literature survey i have came to a conclusion that uh, previous literature uh, research are not uh, used uh, the effect of non homogeneous soil on this fish uh, pen analysis so uh, for that i have first i have uh, used a uh, homogeneous uh, model on a uh, finite uh, model and that uh, result of uh, uh, finite model has been compared with uh, well known dnv rtf 105 uh, fishpan pipeline guideline then that uh, previous uh, homogeneous uh, fpm model has been modified with two layer system uh, to uh, see the effect of non homogeneity of the seabed Uh, for that uh, a two layer system a stiff clay uh, and hard clay i have used and the top soil is actually stiff clay so these are the literature survey i have done uh, in this uh, presentation so moving to the methodology uh, this table shows the geometric properties of my uh, model uh, it should be noted that the shoulder length has been taken three times of the fish span length this is taken from one of my important uh one of the key reference this table shows the material properties of my model uh, a api 5l x60 by grade of stainless steel has been used here uh, this uh, table shows the uh, soil property of my model uh, normal nc clay normal constraints clay has been used here those uh, properties are taken from bnv gl rbf 114 specification and here k v is the uh, static vertical soil stiffness and cbcl are the dynamic uh, uh, dynamic coefficients for determining dynamic stiffness now uh, moving to the first methodology that is analytic method uh, dnb uh, gl rpf 105 is a uh, guideline for fish pen pipeline on that code uh, guideline clause at clause 6.8.2 this uh, expression has been given to determine the natural frequency of fish pen pipeline and uh, this uh, there is a limitation of this uh, expression uh, the the uh, fish span length must be less than 140 times of the diameter uh, of the pipeline and static deflection it should be less than 2.5 times of the diameter and then uh, effective uh, compressive axial force should not be more than 0.5 times of the critical buckling load in this expression uh, m is the effective mass including includes um pipeline hydrocarbon content then added mass and also the mass of the pipeline then lft effect is the effective length of the pipeline the, that uh, the the effective length can be determined by this expression where beta is the non dimension parameter which is also a function of stiffness soil stiffness this soil stiffness can be determined uh, by this expression Uh, kl and kb now uh, when the pipeline uh, vibrate along the direction of the flow 
we no normally call that is as uh, inland vibration for that horizontal stiffness we will use and when the pipeline vibrate uh, uh, perpendicular the flow direction as well as the pipe axis uh, in the this vertical direction then we will use vertical dynamics to estimate kv now moving to the uh, numerical method uh, uh, here uh, i have used uh, s4r element that is 3d reduced uh, shell element continental for pipeline model and ctd8 element for soil model uh, the boundary of the soil has been taken 6.25 times diameter of the pipeline according to gohan and randall this uh, figure shows the missing uh, meshing of my model a uh, mesh sensitivity analysis has been done as well as uh, bias discretization has been provided near the contact surface and the pipeline to uh, incorporate more um, pipe soil interaction more effectively this boundary uh, this figure shows the boundary condition of my model uh, uh, for that uh, uh, a hinge support has been provided uh, uh, from uh, the sides that is x and z direction of the um, soil and the bottom has been uh, uh, i have put fixed support so coming to the interaction uh, for the interaction uh, uh, that is uh, uh, comes under pipe surface and the soil i have used uh, surface to surface contact uh, uh, because it is assumed that uh, this a friction property exists between soil surface and the pipe surface and for for the next that is homogeneous uh, non homogeneous soil uh, where i have modeled the layer soil to uh, uh, it is assumed that both clays uh, surface are fully bonded to uh, each other that's why a tie constant i have used this uh, table shows the um, uh, validation of my ap ap model uh, we using a homogeneous soil uh, from this table it can be uh, observed that for the inline uh, direction uh, uh, around 1% variation for the dnb and ap model and uh, for the cost flow around 6% variation Uh, which validated uh, my uh, ap model this uh, figure shows the inline uh, mode shape for the uh, homogeneous steep clay and this figure shows the cross flow mode shape for homogeneous steep clay model now moving to the non homogeneous model as i have already told you a two layer system has been model uh, a, a, a steep clay stratum is considered to be overlaid above the hard clay stratum the stock soil is actually steep clay okay and the pipeline is uh, laid on the top of the steep clay then a parametric study of uh, increasing uh, top layer soil has been done uh, here in this analysis uh, uh, the 1 meter 2 meter 3 meter 4 meter 5 meter depth of steep clay okay and the total depth of the uh, non homogeneous soil has been kept uh, uh, constant that is 6.25 meter this table shows uh, that down. please uh, please wind up okay your time is over so just okay. wind up the only uh, one minute so this table shows the results of my uh, non homogeneous model uh, uh, from that uh, it, it can be observed that for the inland frequency there is a very negligible effect uh, and this uh, figure shows the cost flow frequency variation of cost flow frequency with increase in depth of steep clay so as the uh, depth of steep clay uh, is increasing the cross flow frequency is getting reduced and it it stumps uh, to the cross flow natural frequency of steep clay about uh, of uh, 0.74814 hertz okay so come to the conclusion uh, so uh, uh, it can be concluded that uh, the ap analysis uh, there is a good agreement between ap uh, model and the dnb guideline which validate the ap mo uh, model and for the non homogeneous uh, model uh, in a layered soil if the topmost soil stratum is thin then it cannot be assumed as homogeneous soil or if the topmost uh, soil stratum is uh, here in this model i consider steep clay uh, thick then top soil will be significant will not significantly affect the inline natural frequency whereas the cross flow natural frequency will dominate by the topmost soil so finally it can be concluded that uh, there is significant effect of non homogeneous soil on natural frequency of crispan pipeline uh, so a more detailed uh, research uh, should be done on this topic so come these are the uh, key reference uh, of my study uh, thanking you if there is any question please ask me. thank you so much gautam uh, can we have one or two quick questions please yes yes ma'am 
Okay, so then uh, now we move to the next presentation on response of multi-storied building considering soil structure interaction under lateral loading by Dr. Snehal Kaushik from Guwahati. Uh, Dr. Snehal, please. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Snehal Kaushik. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Girjanan Chaudhary Institute of Management and Technology, Guwahati, Assam. Okay, so here whatever I'm presenting is uh, work done by my BTEC students. Uh, uh, I think maybe uh, one, one and a half year back uh, before this pandemic. So this is on response of multi-storied building considering soil structure interaction under lateral loading. As we all know that uh, nowadays this uh, construction practice uh, mostly uh, we this uh, people are designing or analyzing a building only considering the structural part okay the soil beneath the structures are avoided so what here we are going to study is what will be the effect when we consider the soil uh, during the analysis of our building okay so here is a quick uh, overview of my presentation uh, so introduction some past studies uh, and observation of the soil structure interaction from the uh, previous earthquakes and the basic objective of the study then how the analytical modeling has been done uh, for the present study then what are the material that we have used and the result of uh, FEM analysis and then we will conclude the session okay so first of all uh, this uh, uh, whenever we are doing this conventional design, we are relating the soil structure interaction here. So this soil structure interaction plays a very uh, important role when we are studying the uh, response of the structure, when they are combined with uh, this footing and embedded soil. So whenever there is an earthquake shaking, so influence of uh, the motion of the soil is introduced deformation in the soil right so that's why uh, because of this deformation there is uh, some uh, effect on our structure also so that we need to consider here so this effect of ssi will be uh, prominent for heavy structure resting on relatively soft soil if you have a soft soil beneath the uh, your structure and if you have a multi storied building then this effect will be uh, more prominent. Then uh, we all know what is a soil structure interaction. That is, this is the response of a soil influence the motion of the structure and subsequently the response of the structure that will influence the motion of your uh, soil. So now from the past earthquake, if you see all these earthquakes, there some uh, interaction of soil and structure were observed and that uh, leads to some damage in the multi-story building. So in all these earthquakes, we have observed a tremendous effect of uh, soil structure interaction uh, and the behavior of uh, the structure uh, was dominated uh, by uh, soil beneath the structure. So some past studies uh, um, can be uh, seen here, uh, which uh, uh, shows how to model uh, the soil structure interaction, how to consider uh, the interaction of uh, soil with the structure, what are the parameters. So all these studies are there. Uh, depending on these studies only, we are uh, uh, considered our analysis here. So from this study, we can summarize that uh, significant damage to the buildings during earthquake shaking in the soil, which will take place. And since the response of the structure depends on the interaction between the structure, the foundation and the soil, it is necessary to consider soil structure interaction while analysis and design of a structure. So main objective here is we will uh, investigate the influence of soil structure interaction on the response of uh, our multi-story building. So in, uh, in this particular study, we are considering the effect of uh, three different soil on three different types of buildings where we are uh, varying the height of the building. And uh, we will determine the response of the building considering uh, the SSI effect and also uh, keeping the building as a fixed space building. 
So here we have these three models, a uh, five-story building, 10-story building, and a 15-story building. These three buildings are considered. And the first case here, we have considered that we have kept the base of all the buildings are rigid, They're like what we do in our conventional design, right? So in like in the practicing engineer, they are considering the fixed base and they are analyzing the structure. So same case we have considered here for the first study. And then we have model, uh, the soil beneath the uh, building, okay, considering three different uh, properties of the uh, soil. So, same buildings we have again modeled, and all this uh, analysis were done using uh, SAP 2000. So, here the methodology we have done nonlinear static analysis using SAP 2000, that modeling this frame element with 2D, then we have modeled the floor slab with shell element, and then the soil is modeled using. 3D solid element giving properties of the soil to uh, this 3D soil element. Okay, and then uh, a lateral displacement were applied and the uh, plasticity, the lump plasticity were considered for the frame uh, part uh, that is for the beams and columns using the auto hinges that are uh, applied in uh, SAP 2000 program. Now, this uh, was the input for the material we have given and we have chosen these three different types of soil with different modulus of elasticity and this properties has been applied in the uh, SAC model. So, these are the results uh, for the finite element analysis for the fifth story. So, this is for the uh, fixed space and these are for three different types of soil. So here we have observed that the top displacement is less for the building situated on hard strata than the cases when soil structure interaction is considered. So when we are considering this hard strata here, the displacement we are getting is less. And also it is observed that the building behaves in a flexible manner and observe less hinges, the plastic hinges that we can observe here, that is uh, less when the soil structure interaction is uh, considered. So this is the uh, pusher curve that we have uh, uh, combined here for all the four cases. That is for soil one, soil two, soil three, and rigid base. So here we can uh, observe that the rigid base model, the capacity of the building, is on the higher side compared to the models with uh, soil structure interaction, and the deflections are quite high in the buildings with SSI. So when we consider the effect of uh, soil here, we are getting the higher range of deflection uh, for the uh, building. Similarly, for 10-story building also, uh, the hinges are formed uh, in the beam first uh, and then the column. Uh, here uh, we have uh, kept that uh, strong column weak beam concept. So we are observing same type of uh, uh, effect here. We are getting the hinges uh, in the beam first. And the hinge failure is observed in beam for the fixed base case while they are not reach the failure stage in case of uh, soil structure interaction. So, however, more hinges are observed in columns considering the soil structure interaction. So, here when we are considering the soil structure interaction, we are getting more number of columns, but the hinges uh, that we are getting here, they are not reach the uh, failure stage. So, sorry. similar. Uh, here we have come uh, uh, this uh, compared the uh, again uh, the pusher curve here and for the lowest stiffness soil that is the soil type 2 which is which is having lower stiffness the capacity of the building gets reduced as the height of the building increases and the capacity of the structure decreases with the decrease in the stiffness of the soil so as the stiffness of the soil uh, going down so the capacity of the structure also going down here so at certain displacement for a type of soil, the capacity reduces as the height of the building increases. So as the, we uh, increase the size of the building and when we consider the soil structure interaction, the capacity is getting reduced. So similar thing we have observed in case of 15-story building also. So whenever our height of the building is going up, our capacity is reducing here. So this is what the capacity that we have got here for from the pusher analysis. And here we can observe that for the rigid base, since here for the we are considering the higher capacity and we are designing for the higher forces here if we are not considering the soil structure interaction. So from this study, we can conclude that uh, 
uh, the base shape capacity of the structure get reduced with the increase in height of the building considering the effect of soil stiffness interaction with the increase in the soil stiffness value the capacity of the building also increases and the formation of plastic hinge in the structure and the overall capacity of the building reduced with the reduction in the stiffness of soil beneath the uh, building it can also be concluded that the response of the structure is overestimated when we are considering uh, when we are not considering the soil structure interaction if we are considering the soil structure interaction then uh, that will be a real uh, uh, problem that we are uh, considering for the analysis and design so hence whenever we are designing or analyzing the structure we should consider uh, the soil structure interaction so special attention is needed while we are analyzing the building under seismic especially under seismic uh, load so ssi should be considered here so in the last i would like to acknowledge uh, this my four btech students uh, these are all these work are done by them uh, tabassum maruf sohel and benushri also to my institute uh, gmt guwahati and to uh, this um, conference which has given me the opportunity to present there So thank you so much. If you have any questions, thank you, Dr. Snehal. So uh, now I request the audience to interact uh, with Dr. Snehal if they will uh, wish to. Just one or two quick questions, please. Anybody? Uh, okay. This is from Kochel. So I have some uh, yeah. observations. Yeah. Yes. So what is the, uh, for example, five-story building? What is the story height? a uh, story height is uh, around means uh, the total height of the building is 17.5 meters around 3 meter 3.5 meters like that okay, so one of the observation is that in the pushover curve uh, see if you see that when it is keep on increasing there is no uh, which are for uh, keep on strain hardening it there is no strain what we can say strain softening or that there is no uh, Oh, see that maybe because of the plastic hinges that is a person yeah 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 because of that so that we... yeah that problem comes generally uh, de depends on the plastic hinge uh, accuracy first thing and second thing uh, so did you people continue this into dynamic time history analysis or only to show oh, no no only we have done because the, they have some limited time because they were okay. students so so then just, yeah uh, so so one of the thing this soil structure interaction is uh, more significant in the case of uh, this uh, dynamic response of yeah, seismic yeah yeah maybe so with some other yeah. other students right. i will right. try to do that yes so the means that the comments like that from what you can write modify it as something like that one uh the chemistry analysis can give better insight that will be a yes, better yes. perspective yes yes okay. yes that is true that is Thank true you. yes yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so thank you, Dr. Snehal. Now yeah, we go you. to the next presentation on dynamic analysis of SSI effects on underground structures by Vijay Kumar from MIT Muzaffarpur. Uh, may I now request the yeah presenter to just share? Just make it full screen and present, please. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, first, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, for get, for giving me the opportunity to present in the uh, seventh international conference of the ICRA G. So today, I am uh, got the opportunity to present uh, the dynamic analysis of SSI soil structure interaction effects on underground structures. So this is Vijay Kumar, assistant professor at MIT Muzaffarpur in the Department of Civil Engineering. So uh, the 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 basic and uh, important aspects of uh, the soil structure interaction I have already uh, discussed by the Mr. Pari sir. So I will not uh, go in the detail of the uh, the fact of the SSI. So the whole presentation will go through the introduction. And uh, for this presentation, I have studied the uh, two type of uh, uh, examples, uh, the problems. Uh, first, to study the effect of embedment for the nuclear power power plant, uh, which was founded on the soft soil, already discussed by the sir. And the second example is like uh, when uh, the RCC building is uh, constructed in the proximity with the underground uh, tunnel. Then we will discuss about the result and discussion. So uh, the, uh, the 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 very basic why we study the uh, dynamics while actually interaction because uh, uh, this uh, alters the motion when motion uh, comes in the soil the response of the structure is get affected and that motion uh, and when the motion is comes in the uh, structure the 
uh, the response of the soil has get altered. So this is a very uh, important aspect to uh, considering the SSI effect when in case of the uh, particular in case of seismic analysis. And also one uh, benefit of the DSSI is that our system gets more flexible and whatever the uh, radiation of the propagating wave, wave from the boundary is uh, moving within the system, it increases the effective damping of the system. So in this uh, regard, in this regard, the SSI effect uh, is very beneficial for such type of structures. So uh, this is uh, one uh, pictorial diagram, whether uh, we can understand uh, why the this SSI is more uh, beneficial. So the first the structure is placed on the rocky strata, and again the same structure is placed on the uh, soft soil. So Sarah has already discussed the three effect like free field, uh, free field effect can absorb in the uh, soil soil interaction, and when the foundation comes in the picture. So the kinematic uh, rotation or kinematic interaction uh, we can understand from the uh, soil acid interaction study. And uh, for the inertial effect, we consider the whole structure when it uh, comes to the picture of the soil foundation and structure. So uh, this is a very uh, effective uh, understanding of the soil acid interaction. When we talk about the uh, nuclear power plant or heavy structures or like underground tunnels, so our main aim is to that the design should be such that it can withstand in a very severe condition of high, high, highly seismic region. And uh, for that, it is very important to apply the proper boundary, proper uh, transmitting or artificial boundary so that we can get the exact uh, response, whatever uh, it's, uh, it's coming uh, with the structure of the system. So uh, for the uh, for the uh, study the SSI effect for the underground structure, the first example taken as a, uh, for the nuclear reactor building, uh, in which uh, the two cases have been considered when the structure is uh, founded on uh, the top of the soil, means there is no effect of embedment, and the same structure is. Uh, uh, same structure is embedded with the soil, and these are the material property which was used for the uh, for the getting the response at uh, uh, three uh, three interested point of interest like base of the foundation, and uh, one is the uh, one point at the top of the soil, and third is the top of the structure. And uh, for the second example, uh, the uh, RCC structure was constructed, and the, in, in the, the, the four cases have been studied. The, the four cases have been studied. In first case, the building is just above the center line of the tunnel, and three different cases also: the five meter away from the structure center line, ten meter, and twenty meter. Uh, uh, twenty meter distance from the center line of the structure have been studied to get the response of the building. And for that, uh, the dimension of the soil have been taken as a 32 meter in depth and 160 meter is the uh, width of the soil. And these, these are the uh, these are the uh, geometric property of the uh, uh, structure which was used. And uh, three types of uh, foundation have been used: isolated footing, mat footing, and pile foundation. And two different aspects have been applied uh, for this uh, structure to get the response for the different points. And these are the material property used for the soil and uh, concrete for the second example. Now come to the uh, uh, first example, like a nuclear reactor building. So two effects without embedment and with impact with embedment effect have been studied with three boundary conditions. First is the uh, viscous boundary condition, uh, Kelvin element boundary condition, and third is the infinite element boundary condition. And this uh, boundary condition was used with uh, the Northridge 1994 earthquake for the PGA of 0.13G, which was applied at the base of the model. And for modeling of the soil, the eight nodal collateral element was used in the plane style condition using abacus. And for the containment cell, it means a structure part, the cell element was used for the uh, messing, uh, for uh, messing the finite element uh, mesh generation. So we can understand uh, from the table when the, 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 the embed embedment effect was a study, when the structure was placed on the rock and soil, we can observe that uh, the structure when, uh, when placed on the soft soil, it is getting the more response rather than the, the structure was placed on the rocky structure. So we can say the SSI just if just get some uh, effect when a structure is placed on the soft soil. Again, uh, the, the, the same structure was studied with three boundary condition for the acceleration response and displacement response. So we can say that the acceleration and displacement response of the system are smaller when we are using the infinite element boundary condition for the system, what, what, for the what it, it has been considered. 
and also the time period of the system have been recorded when the structure is founded on rock without embedment and with impart with, with embedment and it was observed that in case of embedment the structure will the, the system would be more stiffer and the time period of the system decreases and so it, it it can be concluded that the structures get stiffer when we consider the embedment effect so the time period of the system will decreased uh, for the second uh, for the second uh, problems uh, the two input excitation like al centro and uh, north south uh, and uh, the mdr after most on of the point uh, point 35 g for the al centro and point 1 g for the mdr of peak motion have been applied to the bed uh, of the uh, system and uh, the steps which was taken as first the gravity load was applied to the system then dynamic implicit step implicit method uh, for the uh, for the seismic excitation has been applied and two cases has been studied when the seismic when the building before excavation and after the excavation the, the, the two cases have been analyzed and the peak response of the building has been observed so we can observe from here the three types of foundation isolated footing mat footing and pile footing have been uh, used to study the uh, the effect of uh, tunnel position with respect to the center point of the structure so we can observe uh, from uh, from this uh, uh, this figure the peak displacement of building system decreases when the building is shifting away from the center line of the building and the maximum displacement was observed in case of the isolated footing so uh, further the impact of underground structure uh, tunnel on the adjacent building was observed and uh, for the both uh, both earthquake al centro of 0.35 g and mdr of 0.1 g with uh, seven story building and it was observed that the maximum change is about 45% have been observed with this two excitation has been used and the maximum displacement has been occurred in case of the mdr earthquake with respect irrespective of the al centro earthquake with all the cases of the structures in uh, center point center line of the structure away from the uh, center line of the structure so we can conclude that uh, a response of npp structure situated on a, a soil is considered higher than that is situated on rock and it was observed the response increased by with the margin of 67% and of, of course the time to the system decreased because the embedment effect makes the system more stiffer and acceleration of displacement response of the system for the first problem the infinite boundary is compared to the kelvin and viscous boundary getting the less response and the maximum influence of the building is observed when the tunnel is located just below the center line of the building and the displacement response of the building decreases with increasing horizontal position of the tunnel from the center line of the building and it also it was uh, observed that the isolated foundation uh, a uh, system produces maximum response irrespective of the spacing of the tunnel position and th these are the uh, references which were used for the study of this uh, uh, this these two problem okay thank you okay thank you vijay may i now request uh, the uh, audience to have one or two questions please okay so as uh, there is no question so now i request uh, because we have reached towards the end of the this particular session we had uh, all the five uh, uh, presentation along with one uh, soap lecture by dr maheshwari so i request now uh, co chair to just summarize this session thank you thank you so Please. much yeah So this was a wonderful session. Mostly concentrated on that. We started an excellent our Mahesh sir. Then uh, uh, that was especially about the simplified modeling techniques without compromising you know, much on the accuracy. Then uh, we started with uh, Professor Asad uh, uh, about the. Uh, effect of cohesionless soil on the seismic performance under the gravity dams and uh, the it's an excellent experimental work and uh, the result shows that when the heavy weight of the dam positively uh, influence on the seismic response of the structure following we have uh, another experimental session that uh, in order to incorporate the soil structure interaction Uh, for the seismic performance of ready scale models that presentation was also uh, attempted to quantify uh, uh, 
the seismic response uh, variations considering soil structure interaction and without soil structure interaction. The third one, we have a session uh, to uh, uh, an attempt to find out the non homogeneity effect on buried pipes. And uh, the mostly has a, one of the sole conclusions that when if the top layer is thin, then we cannot consider the bottom soil as homogeneous. We have to look for uh, further uh, non homogeneity analysis. So we have to incorporate non homogeneous concentration to the soil. Then, fourth, we have uh, uh, it's uh, mostly into the structural behavior, uh, considering the soil structure interaction to RC buildings, different stories they considered, and the pushover and they attempted to quantify the response in terms of pushover analysis. And lastly, we have uh, uh, buried structures, uh, the influence of buildings at different locations on the seismic uh, performance of the buried structures. So this is about all the sections. Mostly, this is, uh, all these are very particular items, especially the first presentation and the second presentation uh, uh, has uh, give a wonderful attempt in terms of it. even though the accuracy it's a, some question actually it was a bare attempt to uh, approach the problems in in the experimental mode. So that is from the session. That is from the co-chair side. So thank you and. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Mohammad. Now, um, uh, at the end, I uh, thank all the presenters on my behalf and on behalf of the organizers for the contribution to Ikraji. Uh, and then I thank the organizers to give me this opportunity to interact uh, in this particular manner. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dr. Ra. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you, madam. So I, on behalf of the organizing committee, I thank all the speakers and uh, the chair and co-chair for, for you know, efficiently conducting the session within the time. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you and See stay you safe, everybody. For the next session. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you.